back in the heyday of the internet, it was run by cowboys, and it was totally not ready for commercial prime time. And so there were a few of us out there that were focused on the potential of the internet, but it wasn't getting there. There were problems with congestion, there were problems, it just wasn't hardened, it wasn't commercialized. And for those of us who cared, we knew that a company like Equinix would need to exist. Somebody would have to be the steward of all this infrastructure. We didn't think it would take quite as long and cost as much money, but when we got behind it, the rest of the internet got behind us, and that's really the story. You have to remember that when Equinix was started, there really wasn't anything like us. There were no fancy data centers yet. There were no real even e-commerce sites of the size that we talk about today. And so the team had to be a little crazy. Like no one who came to work for Equinix at the beginning really were from a world of scale that we all now just take for granted. And so it was a crazy time. We partied a lot, we had a lot of fun, and we took a lot of risks together. I'll never forget, uh, it was August of 2000, and Al Avery, my co-founder, uh, who started all this with me, showed up at my house in a stretch limousine. Him and his wife, Barb, picked me and my wife, Brenda, up because we were celebrating the IPO of the company. And at that moment in time, you have to understand, it had only been a couple of years from when we first founded the company. So the, the crazy roller coaster up to that point, and I'll never forget sitting in the back of that limo, looking at Al, and we just couldn't even speak. We didn't even know how this had happened. It was a great moment. Well, the best part for me uh, and, and this, this goes without saying, I think it's, it's true at Equinix and it's true anywhere I've worked, is when you look at how it's impacted the lives of the employees. I remember at the time that I left Equinix, there had been 17 marriages from people who had met at Equinix, right? And that's just the start. You think about, it, the company's 15 years old. How many lives it's touched, and directly and indirectly even with the services that we provide. So, so to me, that's really important. That makes it worth it. Equinix, in, you know, I, I don't tell anyone, but is the most powerful internet infrastructure company in the world. It has the largest footprint. It has the most diverse customer set. That's a powerful place to be. And you can choose to just sit back and say, okay, you know, here comes the money and sell the services. But you could also choose to use that position of power to make a difference, to use that position to allow and, and enable the internet in places that it's never been before, right? We have problems in the mobile infrastructure that the old school way of doing things isn't going to work for the next 20 years. And so it's time to move a little bit up the stack, remain neutral and be the great Equinix that you always were, but take advantage of that position to help catalyze, particularly the mobile proliferation in the third world. You know, it, it, when you work for a big company, it's sometimes easy to forget, but really to be successful and to love your work and to wake up in the morning, drive into the office and think that you're making a difference. You need to be entrepreneurial in your job. It doesn't matter if you're in finance and sales and marketing or you're on the you know, traditional coding engineering side. It doesn't matter. In all jobs, if you can be a little entrepreneurial, challenge assumptions and take some risk. I know the executive team is not going to be happy that I'm telling the employees to take risks, but really everyone should take a little bit of risk in their job. Not only will they love the work, but the result will be phenomenal.